Alrighty, hello, 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 hello. Here is another attempt to turn a stream into a YouTube video. So this is gonna be interesting. But for those of you who are tuning in, welcome. If you wanna learn how to use a bow, this is the stream to watch, I guess. Today we're gonna to learn how to use one. We got a series of bows tonight. Pretty much everything that you can pack bow-wise, not including crossbows, because they're just guns, really. So we've got the long bow. We have the recurve bow, hidden dragon skin, because it's just fucking sick. Look at that gold finish, I love it. We come across to the bear claw, 60 pound crossbow. We've got the bright sight on that at the moment. Sorry, not the bright sight. We've got the night vision, the true vision sight, which lights up, you can turn that off as much as you like, see? But yeah, it's pretty rubbish at the moment. Looks a bit buggy. Seems a bit patchy, but that's something for another time. We also have the Coda, 65 pound. This is a bit bit more balanced. This is my preferred bow, outside of like long bows and recurves, mostly because it's just snazzy looking. Got the nice bright bowstring, bright sight that links up with it. Pretty tight, pretty tight. And then we have this machine. Oh my God. This is the Hawk Edge CB 70 pound crossbow, oh crossbow, compound bow, CB, compound. The 70 pound, this thing, this thing is an absolute monster and it is so much of a monster that I don't really use it. I don't really use it. It's, it's great for small game, which is why I've got the small game arrow on it. It just, it gives you that extra p penetration with the massive Massive draw weight, like it fucking punishes, man. It is a big, big bow. So, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. We're going to talk about sights. We're going to talk about how to sight bows without sights. And then we'll, uh, we'll take them out there a bit. But as you can already see, things are going to be a little bit different with each bow that you use. Each one has its own little standards, its own little perks, and its own little strengths and weaknesses, such as the longbow and the recurve bow. So the re longbow that I've got now, this has a lower penetration than the recurve bow, but the penetration carries over a longer range. So shooting over here, that's a fucking, that's ages away, that one. That's going to be like a big shot. I don't even think I'll land that. I was pretty close. That will actually give the penetration you want at the long range. But with the recurve, things are a little bit different. You wanna, you wanna make the compensate, because it's more short range, right? So you're, you'd be more shooting at something like this over here. You'd be burying arrows in that. That gives you massive penetration, and I'm talking massive penetration. Like it will bury right through animals, right through them. But when it comes to animals like over there, that's going to be much harder to hit. That's going to fly left, it's going to fly right, up, down, and you're going to lose a lot of arrow force. You actually have to aim much higher. Yeah, I'm not even hitting the target. That's, that's how hard it is to use with the, the recurve. But you want to shoot stuff like more that far away. You feel? That was a nine. That was pretty good. But the longbow, the longbow will carry. So you'll get more penetration up close with the recurve. Still get a bit with the longbow but the longbow will travel it further where the recurve won't, it, it just doesn't carry. So when you move over to compound bows, now these are much more simple. You know, they, they got sights, you're well and truly guided. They generally hide at about 40 meters. Now on, on arrows, you will see, it has effective range of 20 meters. Ignore that, ignore that completely. Because as you go along, the 20 meters will definitely extend and it is still extremely effective at a 40 meter reach. This is about 35. Like you can just shoot straight. Obviously you're gonna have perks at this stage. This will be more advanced. I'll go over that in a minute. But you shoot straight and it'll fly straight. That, that's pretty much what you want. But when you start off, you don't wanna be shooting for things like, don't, don't be shooting for that, mate. Don't even try. You're just gonna look stupid. Go for close range, go for close range. Yeah, close range is good. That way you, you got all of the accuracy you want. You're sure as shit gonna hit your target and things will go well. 
That's what you want. You're going to put your target down every time. And arrows are just ridiculously strong. Ridiculously strong. You don't even have to hit your target too well. And, and it'll put them down. Easy. That's what the difference between bows and guns are necessarily. Yeah, anyone can shoot a gun. Now we'll go over here, we, we'll talk more about the sights. Now everyone knows about the bright sight, I'm sure. But those who don't, it's a rangefinder bow sight. You can sight your target. For Xbox, you tap your X button. Boom, there it is. Now see, I've got a second green dot. That's where my arrow is going to land. So I'll line my green dot up. Bushk, right in the middle. Bit of wind carry, but that's all right. That's really, really handy. Really useful tool. If you do pick up the DLC weapon pack for the, the high-tech high DLC, you'll get yourself the coder and you'll get yourself the, the bright sight. But more about that later. We have the three-pin bow sight, which I've got currently on the 70-pound. The 70-pound I use for small game, which is why I got this thing on it, because when you're up nice and close, you just got to have your rabbit in between top two dots. Every time. Without fail. You, know, you don't even worry about it. And the big 70 pounds will have that arrow bury because you can see straight up it's a blunt like it's a blunt arrow it's just got a couple of pins on it it's not like an arrow so it, it's all impact force but with these bad boys it's pretty much the same story but the lighter arrow you want to aim a little lower it's still probably a bit too low it's getting there it's getting there all right so you want to sight your longbows though this is where it gets really really tricky you don't have a sight. You've only got your arrow to guide you. And the thing about the arrows is they change. Now this mid-range arrow is for things like uh, that fella there, that fella there. And you get uh, weapons, uh, sorry, arrows, such as, I'll go with the 700 grain because it's a nice big one. You get these bad boys and you'll see straight away the arrow is different. It's got no top tip on it. Now that is very important. The top tip is just going to either obstruct or guide. It really depends on what arrow you use the most. Now I use these ones the most, so the top tip gives me real problems. When you sight with, with these, I like to use the curve of the top of the arrow as a kind of iron sight. Because at 40 meters, which is going to be like that thing right there, like I'm zeroed here, 40 meters, it's just below it. So that'll essentially be where you want to shoot. Oh, that was a bit high. No, it was all right. It was good. The wind's blowing in my face, so it's going to drop my arrow a bit. The wind affects your arrow, which is obvious. Most people think just left or right, though. If you're shooting into the wind, it's going to have more wind resistance. It'll drop earlier. You shoot with the wind, it'll carry further. Sights, especially the bright sight, the, the rangefinder bow sight, doesn't make up for wind. You won't get a left or right based on, like, on the wind. So you have to make that judgment call on your own. So shooting against the wind with a little bit of the right, I want to aim a touch higher and a touch to the left. Now that's really hard to do because you can see already the sight, like the arrow covers the target where I want to hit. So it takes a lot of readjusting to get the shot off. And I was still too far to the right. Well, not far enough to the left, I guess. So it's probably more going to be somewhere there. That was too low. Way too low. But you can, you can see that the difference between using like a sight and no sight is huge. Like, that's a much easier lineup. I'm using a different arrow, so it's going to miss entirely. But yeah, getting closer. These sights are not, I'm not used to. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Now, going back to these, these nasties, you can see right away. But if, even if I want to hit that, I have to cover my animal almost entirely. That's not good. That's not good. But to avoid this, you want to get yourself the zeroing perk from rifles. You want to work your way up to this bad boy. You want to get the long range zeroing perk because it affects your bow. It does. It affects your arrow. So as you get, you can see down there on the bottom right hand corner, very bottom right hand corner, the number changing, 60 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, that's your zeroing. So at 20 meters, my bow's gonna fly low. So on this one here, that's probably about 20 meters. So I wanna aim pretty much 
on the target. You want to put the arrow basically on the target. Book up. And you'll and you'll get somewhere. In that, that black that black range is where you want to be. That's that's critical shooting. Outside in the white is less likely to be vital. But if I change it up to now 40, I'll put the arrow in the same spot. Well, I won't put the arrow, I'll, I'll side it to the same spot. Fucking bear with me. And it hasn't even landed on the target. It is landing way up the top there. You can see it's smacking off the, off the thing. And if I go up to 60, it'll land even higher. You see, that's way up there. So the zeroing affects the arrow shot. So when you're doing the longer meters, you want to have it high. But on that note, when I'm using a sightless bow, I keep it zeroed at 60, the longest range possible, because that way I can just make a judgment call without having to cover my entire animal. I can still get a sight. And the 60 meter at about 40 meters will be the tip of your mid-range arrow. So around the line, on your grip here, you count from your arrow, you count one, two lines of the grip, where it kind of the seams. That's about where you want to put it. About that high off the top of your arrow. And it should just land pretty true. Yeah, we're inside the black, which is good. They're critical shots. You don't really want to worry too much about landing those perfect shots. The damage of the arrow is seriously going to carry you the whole way. So you just want to just hit anywhere inside that black mark. That'll govern the factor of your, of your kill shot. So you can see already that it's flying pretty, pretty accurate. I, I use these, these bows all the goddamn time. So I, I can get them pretty on point. But, you can, but my point being though, if I change over to the, boom, the bigger arrow, which has the flat top, I don't have that top bit to guide me. So it's just kind of a matter of putting it where you think that top will be. That was heaps low because it's a recurve. So you know what? You can see the recurve drops way more than it should. It's flying high. See, it's also really inaccurate. There we go. There we go. But up close, up close, it's a cinch. You just peg it straight in the hole. You just got to remember to compensate for the zeroing distance. And I use it like this because I can see, I can see my target. Where if they're at 20 meters, zero to 20 meters, I got to cover the bad boy to actually get inside that black circle. You know, I got, I got to essentially hide my target. And when they're moving, especially moving from right to left, your animal is actually behind the hilt of your bow. So you want to have them going from left to right, so that way they're on your left as you're tracking them this way to line up a shot. Because if you're tracking them this way, they're going to be behind your bow hilt, and that's that's. Probably the biggest issue. You go over to the bow sights like these ones, or a rifle sight even, it's nice and round. Either side of your dot, you've got some, you got some clearance, you get a bit of peripheral. But it closes up when, it, when you use your other one. Birds and stuff, they're always good to take down if you ever have the opportunity. So, you know, make sure you got plenty of things equipped. It. That's the wrong arrow, so don't use that. We're going to go out, we're going to take some things out. I think that pretty much covers the essentials when it comes to sight and your bow. There's not much more I could really explain without actually killing something. So let's go out there and we'll, we'll do a wander. I'm going to mute up for a moment while I take a walk. I don't even know if I want to hunt on this region. I just come here because of the... Uh, the bow sight. We'll go at the, the bow range. We'll go after Buffalo. All right, I'm going to take a small section of break here just to go back over the stuff that I've already written down that I want to make sure I cover. Because today we're essentially going to be mostly covering the longbow and the recurve bow. I will demonstrate differences with the different pounds, the different arrows, the different sights. But uh, essentially, there's no bow that's going to do better and another bow. They, they all have their fors and against. They all have their, their trades and their perks. The things that you want to give or sacrifice. Like when changing to a bow, the most important sacrifice that you are making is your range. The shadows of those birds, 
the shadows of those birds just flew right through here as one of them passed the sun. That's gnarly. That's gnarly. All right, so I'm just going to grab some callers, sort some stuff up. I don't like this bright side. I'm actually going to put on the five pin to the 60 pound. Burr, 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 up that one. Thank you very much, sir. Five pin. Now, excuse my frame rate. It gets a little bit dodgy as we bounce around the outposts. It'll clear up in a moment. Let me just sort out. Uh, crossbows. Crossbows, we will cover another time. Now, they're a little bit. They, they, they're a little bit different to bows. So I'll, I'll cover those a bit later. Call it, call it, call it, call it, call it. Here we go. All right, now what do we get out here, guys? What do we get out? We get puma. I know there's red deer. Don't know about pigs. Don't know about pigs. There's axis deer, but I don't care much for axis deer. That's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. Move over to storage. Oh, I'm already in storage. I'm gonna move over to inventory because you gotta remember to always, always put stuff in your inventory. What the hell was that? That was probably an access deer. Maybe a, a water buffalo, which we want to go after. Mm, lures. Put a predator one on there. The red deer collar on there. Just in case. Just in case. All right, we're going to do the roam. And when hunting with bows, it's very important to understand the hunting mechanism. You're going to be doing this at the absolute basics. You're not going to be taking long shots. You're going to be sneaking in, using your environment, careful where you're treading, all of that business to make sure you can get up as close as possible. You want to be in that creature's face, mate. You want to be staring them down so you can see the life leave their eyes as you put one in them. You need to be able to land that shot and land it with confidence. You want to be making those shots every time. You want to get up into the 70s, even 80% accuracies with your, with your bows. Make sure you're certain of your shot. If you even think to yourself, oh yeah, maybe, don't shoot. It's okay not to shoot. It's okay to hunt another time. This game is about having the patience, making the decision on whether you want to whiff the shot, mess up your trophy, or just chase it down again and make, make the shot even more, more in your favor. So if the wind is in my face, generally what I do is I just pick up a sprint. I start running, scare things away. So that way when they, they scatter, I can follow something that's not in, in my, my scent can. So at the moment, I'm just kind of sneaking around here just for demonstration's sake, but I don't actually need to. I can put all this away. There we go. We're getting some calls now. That sounds actually more like a bullfrog than anything. I didn't equip my binoculars. I've only got the small power ones at the moment because you essentially want them for just range finding, just getting a spot on them, getting a, getting a gauge on their distance. So you don't need anything strong. You can see plenty with it. It's nice and thick down here, so you're not looking for like 24 times zoom. 8 to 16 should be fine. Forgive my very small sensitivity. It's not very strong because that makes for easier fine-tune adjustments. And I'll talk about that when we line up our first target. But the low ADS sensitivity means that I can make tiny adjustments without the risk of overselling my correction. It makes it balls hitting like fast moving targets, but you don't generally want to be shooting at those anyway. <clears throat> Just gonna keep on creeping until we find something. We're making a bit of racket here, which is good. Some people would say it's not, but we will get a warning call. And if we get a warning call, that'll give me some direction. Sneaking up on stuff kind of makes it, well, a bit of adrenaline pumping. It can be a bit much. Truck pass.
mustn't bomb my house. Just had to mute that microphone quick before it buries everything. We got some tracks over here. Hopefully, water buffalo. That's usually what you get around these parts. Take a quick picky old pick. Definitely looks like water buffalo to me. Yes, it is. We got a female on the run. That's a good start. Water buffalo, much like bison, they don't like to run too too hard. Over there, coming to me. All right, now this this big boy, I'm going to use my coder for, or even, yeah, this feels a lot better. I might go with the recurve. See how close we get. Where is she? There she is. This frame rate's going to bug me out a little bit. No, oh, it's bolted. All right, let's try for the moving target. Zero to sixty. Gotcha. Here comes another one. Oh, here comes a few actually. Which means that one's coming back. Oh my word. Just kind of waiting. You gotta be opportunistic with your shots to make sure you tag them. Get out of the way. Buffalo are like super aggressive. Super aggressive. Now I hit him pretty good, I'm sure of it. So they're not gonna last too long. But we know where they went. We got a good tag in on that one. There's a big male there. We might follow that track for a little bit. This other one would have gone down up here somewhere. There is no doubt about it. The thing about bows is you don't have to tag them too hard. Like tag them true. Obviously they can run far, but very rarely do things come back from. Do I have this feeding zone yet? No, I don't. Rarely do things come back from taking a shot from a boat. They're just, people call them overpowered for a reason. Because when you get good with them, there's, there's really no stopping you. You can literally carry one bow and all the ammo types you need. You don't need to be fiddling around with weapons and changing up sights and distances and all of that business. You got one set distance, one set damage. But that first shot I knew was rubbish. I knew it was rubbish. I went for the second shot. It was a bit of a panic shot. Nearly got there, but it turned on me. But still, as you can see, rubbish shooting. Hella hitting. Hella hitting. That was a rubbish, rubbish bow score reward. Because there was very little sighting, very little use of, of the bow's capabilities. So with that, I might change back to the longbow because that one's easier for me to side up. I'm just used to using it and it works at the longer ranges. So we'll keep tracking this one down. So there are quite a few here. So we've got, got a bit to play with over the time. I expect a warning call soon or the thud of one running off. Good thing about water buffalo and them being so heavy is they never run far. And because they're in a herd, they'll always stick together. Until I, of course, slowly pick them off. There they are, look at that. Coming back this way, I'm going to head them off at the waterfront here. I might be able to get a little bit choosy with my, my shots. I want to be careful of my visibility because some of these trees don't hide you too well. One's already under me. Big boy over there. So I'm gonna get to this tree. Hopefully it actually does conceal me because sometimes, sometimes they don't. Oh, they're already running. Oh, he might be pissed at me actually. A couple of them might be pissed at me. You look pretty nice. No, you're too quick. Hey, yeah, uh, look at that. Do you see him go then? Boom. Oh, that was a leg shot. It's all right, let him run. We're going to keep coming. We're going to have plenty of shots. There's one. That's a good one. I hit a bone. You could hear it. That one's dead. Oh, a bit early. A little bit early. I can't see through there. You look pretty big. Wait for the chin. That hopefully hit a lung. I'll give him a second one just in case. No, that's not going to happen. Jesus, they're still coming. Funk. How many of these are there? You're a big boy. 
I don't think that hit. It's still coming. Gotcha. Alright. Let's pick them all up then. Oh, I think we tagged about five, maybe six. But as you can see, the quick load speed, the quick release speed, these sightless bows have a real advantage. Like they're not going to take your sight away and then leave you with just hopes and dreams. Okay, they're going to make sure that there's benefit to the handicap. This game does that. And then you can work on your placement once you learn, like bones, look at that. It went right through the scapula. The bone stopped nothing. Absolutely nothing. But you can draw, you can fire, you can draw, you can fire. That one was, that one is what I call a really bad shot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure many of you probably share that. That is also a really bad shot, but I was kind of shooting on the, uh, the panic button. I was less worried about aiming and more worried about getting the arrows out. <clears throat> but on the 60 meter, all I know is that I aim low. I want to put my animal clear in front of my view. And that should land pretty good. Now, there's going to be more dead ones turning out. Ones that I shot as well. It was pretty intense, actually. They all just kind of run through me. And I survived. Very important in situations like that. To stay the fuck alive. There's some blood. Some to follow. Not a big bleed, right? But it's bleeding nonetheless. So I'll truck along with this a little bit. See what we turn up with. See what else we can do, then we'll talk about doing the longer range shots. That's what everybody wants to know. That's what everybody wants to use a bow for, those big, big bangers outside 100 meters, you know. That takes a bit of calculation, a bit of wit, a bit of thought. You're not going to be dropping those by watching this, then picking up a bow tomorrow and being like, yeah, I can shoot can shoot birds out of the sky and stuff. Don't expect that to happen. It takes practice, it takes time at the range, learning the bows, learning the arrows, because arrows behave differently because of their weights. Practicing with different wind directions. So you go up the range and you keep resting until the wind changes to another direction and work with it. And always remember that if it's in your face, arrows are heavier. The wind's blowing at you, it slows down quicker, it drops quicker. So you've got to compensate for that, where sights don't. So obviously if it's blowing to the right, it's going to pull to your right. Blowing to the left, it's going to pull to your left, it's blowing in your face, it's going to slow. If it's blowing with, like you're shooting with the wind, you have almost zero resistance nearly. And it will carry that little bit further. So down to a trot. Just been kind of chatting away, so there's probably a dead one somewhere nearby that I've walked right past and haven't even thought about. But that's alright. Some of the visuals of this game just blow my goddamn mind. So I've definitely hit a couple extra than I picked up. I feel like I can hear footsteps coming in and out. I'm forgetting that I'm carrying a backpack, so I'm going to be like super noisy. The wind's in my face, so when the wind's in my face, I bolt it. Well, it's not in my face, sorry. It's with me. Like I'm running with the wind. My stink is in my face as I run into it ahead of me. I keep chugging on. Hopefully I'll see a sharp change in direction here. not in my scent cone. There they are. Or 
Allison. And it looks like they're running to the northwest. North vicinity. So I'm going to run further down. I want to get behind them before I start running along with them. Forgetting to take this backpack off is going to be a real, uh, real kink in my side. So I'll probably make a deal with that in a minute. <coughs> but first. Ah, they're coming back across. That's not good. All right, so we'll see if we can get a nice long shot here with the uh, coda. Way up in the distance there. I don't trust this angle. It's just rubbish. There's a nice black and orange one there. 81 meters, that's not terrible. Wind's not quite in my favor. Aiming higher, higher, higher. Oops. Ah, he bolted to the sound. He would have left before the arrow even reached. That's all right. They're pretty on edge. Just keep on trucking. Persistence is everything. I don't like that they kept moving west though. The wind isn't exactly all that great at the moment. I bet they went down the hill. That's like my luck. Let's just... See how it always is. Which is a problem because down the hill is right into the wind. Maybe not. I don't think they went down that. I feel like they went to and it was like, no. Look at that down there though. Might have to bring the quad bikes out here. There's some pretty good climbs out this way. Back on track. Buffalo. Now they're a little more out of our wind cane now, so I'm going to sort out an outpost. No, I'm not. It's ages away. <laughs> that is a heavy buffalo. Oh boy. That's a big one. That's a big one. I don't think I'll actually get him because I'm noisy. The scent cone is all like absolute rubbish. All right, I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's play this smart, which is always the smart thing to do. coffee yeah hopefully I can turn this into a YouTube video and uh, it will further break down like it will isolate the important information all this rambling and stuff will be cut out I didn't want to change time time is fine I want to take this backpack off I'm gonna lose some of these bows because they mostly the CB 65 covers pretty much all of it. It's like a mixture. It has all around, because it's a 65 pound, it's like the balance between these two. These two differ much like the, uh, the uh, uh, longbow and the recurve bow differ. So the CB, uh, 60, 60 pound bow, it's gonna have less peasant penetration, it's gonna have less velocity, it's gonna have less, uh, less reach. Uh, where the CB70, that will throw an arrow further, but because of the massive drive behind the arrow, it's way less accurate. The arrow wobble is much stronger. So even at the longer ranges, it may reach, but it's not gonna be too good as far as landing your target accurately. This one here, this will be much more accurate at the longer range. 
but you do lose some penetration. So when it comes to long, longer shots with the bow, this bad boy comes in handy because it's got the extra five pounds to push the arrow where you need it straight up over to the, to the long range, but it'll keep the penetration that little bit longer in your shot. So uh, with your perks, you want to combine stuff like that while I'm mentioning this, not knowing this one, archery. Now what you want, there's, there's a bunch of, as you can see, I've just filled up my archery completely. I wanted everything except for that because I don't care for, you know, shooting a bow while I'm prone. It just doesn't seem, you know, like the thing to do. But down here, you want to have this at absolute max. The high, if you get it to absolute max, you can have an arrow drawn indefinitely. Like it, it just, it feels like such a long time. You would not even need how long it's given you. There was, I can't even think of an instance apart from like posing for a photo where you would need to have like an arrow drawn for so long. I could probably sit like this for ages and it takes a little bit. But the biggest thing you'll notice is the sway. The sway slowly gets bigger. Like, look, I'm still holding. I'm still holding. Still holding it up. But when, when you don't have that perk, it slowly pulls down. The draw weight starts to get to you, and then he lets go. You can only hold it for so long. So when you're in the lower perk range, you're going to be constantly moving up to fight that. So you don't want to be scoping up for long. You want to scope up, check your target, release, scope up, confirm that you're sure about your shot. You can take the shot now, but sometimes it is best to wait again, then take your shot. You'll usually have time, especially if you've been smart about your approach, but you'll always come in, wait for the sway to hit your target area that you want to hit, inhale, and it'll stop right where you want it, take your shot. And that's just pretty pretty standard behavior when it comes to using a bow. You don't, you don't want to be lining up and then trying to line up, sight your shot, set your target, and then shoot all in one draw because you will lose a lot of accuracy and you'll end up spending way too much time readjusting your shot to compensate for the drop of the arrow, the drop of the bow. And, and you don't want to be doing that. So you just want to line up, set your target, make a decision, visually on how far it is let it go pull it back up again after a couple of seconds and then get ready for it this is where you want to either take your shot or confirm if you're still unsure about your shot use that second draw to kind of reassure yourself this is where you want to make the decision of the yes or no that you want to take your shot if you're straight up certain you can just shoot on that second draw but I always advise to never fire on your first shot because you, you're going to be lining up, you're going to be doing things and the bow is going to be reacting to you while you try to do this. So with all of that resistance, you want to make sure that you give your arms a rest, you give your heart rate a, a little bit of a slowdown. So while I'm here in storage, I want to get a couple more arrows. I know so I was a little bit short, not storage, the store. They're okay, they're okay. Those ones. Not those ones. Are those trace ones? No. Seven hundred. That's the ones I'm missing. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm gonna jump with the quad bike and we go chase those buffaloes down a little bit. Do a little more of the uh, horseback hunting, and I'm gonna need to go in here for this. Whoa, okay. Feel a little dizzy all of a sudden. All right, let's do it. Wind's changed a little more now. I feel pretty good about that. These buffalo are probably gonna be looking for more water, so I might even be smart to go down there. There we go. Let's keep. Let's just push along the road a bit. Forgive me if the quad bike is super freaking loud, because it's super freaking loud. I've been messing with my volumes a bit, so hopefully it's not too bad. I 
I honestly think the trucks driving past my house are probably a little worse than the, the quad bike at the moment, so... That's better. Right, we're catching up to where we chased them to. Now these guys are much like bison. You can chase them down on the quad bike, but they are a bit harder. It's like a next level up. Like bison is easy mode. go after buffalo such as these ones like water buffalo and it's like bison bison chasing in hard mode I guess so forgive me if this gets sloppy I'm used to chasing bison basically chase them down till I see them, then I'll follow them on foot. I didn't take my backpack off like a douche. Which is what I was meant to do. Going back up the hill. Because <laughs> fuck me, right? Go, 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 go. Up, 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 the hill. into what looks like open fields, this could be good. Oh, those are pretty. I don't, I don't know what tree that is, but it looks nice. Hey guys, I see you over there. I see you. You can't hide from me. Big old little hefty beach. Hey. Right, so we got two, it looks like. I might have taken out more than I thought. Otherwise, this is an entirely different set. Or well, they're all just at the back. You can see I'm catching them pretty swiftly. I'm right up on their booties right now. There's a few more out in front, so I should be able to position myself up here without getting picked up. And jump. Got my bow. Ready for him, ready for him, ready for him. Shoot! That was a spine shot. Can't have that. Ah, come on. There we go. Look at that, first baby down, first baby down. Now when it comes to hunting like that, you're spending less time aiming and more time getting the fuck out the way, holy shit. But that was a good clean shot up the booty there. If I had to use a Rico for that, no, 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 no. I do not want to kiss, mate. Ah, terrible shot, terrible shot. Is it coming back at me? No. Let's see if I can get this on the long run. Oh, get some. Where are you going? Where are you going? Ah, nearly got it with the second one. But I did get it with that first shot. That was probably like shit. I can't really pick where I want it to land in that case. It's one of the drawbacks of the long bow. It does reach the long shots. Oh, and it was good. That is fucking fantastic. There we go. Look at that. So you can see, even even when I'm not sure, super effective. Super effective. And that wasn't with even much compensation as far as like distance goes. That was my best one yet. Look at that. Oh, no, I got an 800 up there. I got two 800s up there. Fucking beautiful. <laughs> I'll chase a couple more down. There was definitely a more out in front of that lot. And I'm confident they're going to keep together still. 
starting to rain, which is always a pleasure. Nothing more comfortable than being dressed in full hunter's gear and it starts raining with a backpack on. They kind of go and this one stuck to the ridge, but the others went down the hill. So he'll probably rejoin in a sec. Go, 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 go. Can't be certain where they're going at this point. Looks like they, they're just kind of running. I'm kind of also curious as to whether they run out of old tracks and I have just confirmed but I am in fact not, as I say that. Awesome, yep, good little tree right there, stopping a 500 kilo bike in its tracks. Probably 300, feels 500. Oh, we got a nice vantage point here. I might pick out the recurve though for this boy. I actually think that's a cow. Oh, it's gonna wreck me before I even live through this. It's a bit far away for the very curve, but I'll, t I'll try for it. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. It's too far away. I was hoping it was gonna turn on me, but it didn't. Well, it, it did, but it didn't stay fighting me. Sometimes they don't leave you. They'll, they'll wait until you're well and truly dead. The rain is gonna make this hard to see. Uh, for people who are new to bows, this is essentially what you're going to want to do to get your bows score out nice and quick. Now you can actually use the mid-range arrows to very effectively and quite swiftly take down bigger game. Even though the class, you know, isn't, uh, isn't ideal, you can still get plenty of XP on the tail end, especially when you pick them up in big quantities. So you look for big game animals like bison or buffalo, whether you're on Virunga, here on Park, or uh, Silver Ridge Peaks, Yukon, wherever you are. Just chase them on the quad bikes, I'm telling you, as a herd, just follow them. <laughs> follow them, they don't move so fast at all. Excuse the ambulance. But you get in there, you get into the front half-ish, of their herd and then just turn around and shoot back the herd mentality I'm telling you they will not they're not going to turn because you're there only if you go too far in front of the entire herd itself position yourself somewhere in the middle jump off and look back behind you like what I was doing earlier they just run right through you Now they're kind of spinning left and right and up and down here a bit. So I'm just kind of judging which way they look like they've gone. Okay, okay. Check some poopy over here, make sure I'm still on track. Yeah, I see, these are coming backwards. I followed these in, didn't I? This is where they all regrouped. As you can see. They've gone. Okay, yeah. I'm looking now, Georgie.
until I don't hunt Prague too much because I have no idea where the fuck I am. I call it Prague because I'm dyslexic, it's Prague. Nice fields here. These fields are good. It means we gain ground. We gain lots of ground. Close that gap. It's hitting things like trees that'll slow you down. That's what you've got to avoid. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to go around the patch. Patch of bush. We actually have a lot of buffalo still. Oh, there they are. Holy shit. Yeah, thanks for the warning, guys. What the fuck? <laughs> Looking at the goddamn ground. Hello, knife. Yeah, mate, how the fuck are ya? Fucking sore. Alright, so I'm pretty much dead, so I should really think about... Fixing myself up here. Because that's going to end really, really quickly. Alright, time to clean up my inventory, get rid of this backpack, and make roaming around a little bit easier on me. So, first of all, character. Take it off. Yes. Storage. Alright, I won't... I won't be using the 70 pound. Just, just because... It's way too rough, way too rough. So what I might do is I might pack my standards. I might go with the sightless and the sightful. We're pretty much good for that, good for that, good for that. I want my goddamn health packs. We're not gonna need these sights anymore. I will keep the five pin on me because I haven't shown you guys that yet. It's essentially a three pin sight, except you got two extra pins in between the tops and middles and bottoms. It wasn't callers that I needed, was it? It was a health pack. Health pack, stay on track now, stay on track. Badushka. Here we go. Fantastic. There we go. Fucking heal up because I'm an idiot and didn't do it just now. Sorry to all of my OCD viewers that have probably just looked at my inventory slots and gone. <gasps> I don't care, because it's not a mess here. It knows what's up. Right now, where were we? The buffalo were coming this way, so I'll see if I can meet them down here at the water. Jesus, keep up frame rate, fuck. Just kind of walking and listening. Wait for another opportunity. Ooh, I just thought about something that I haven't mentioned, that I haven't spoken about. That is probably something that is one of the most important things about bow hunting. Fucking relax, man. Fucking relax. It can be pretty intense sometimes, especially when you use rifles and used to shooting at a distance. Getting right up close to it. Get right up close to your kill. Like that, that can be pretty brutal. And having your own heart rate up can be just as bad as having it up in the game. all about keeping calm. I use bows all the time. It's literally all I carry. Like what's exactly happening now, except my equipment is probably a little better filled out. <coughs> but um, yeah, relax. Relax, 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 relax. Use them a lot. Get used to using them. Get comfortable with using them. 
And you'll definitely be shooting like Robin Hood by the end of that, I promise you. You'll be able to split and arrow at 110 meters. But it's all about the persistence. It's all about the practice. It's all about keeping it up and studying the weapon that you use. Don't just pick it up and think it's going to behave the same as everything else you've done. It's not the status quo, mate. But it's also not for everybody. I mean, if you don't like to feel like an absolute legend that is king of all hunting grounds by flicking a stick at an animal and putting it down at 100 yards because you used a little, little string that was attached to another stick. I mean, come on, man. You can't tell me it doesn't feel good to put a kill down with a bow and arrow. It does. It feels really good. Now, the, the buffalo that ran past me didn't really come this far back, did they? There was only two of them, which was peculiar because there were like 50 sets of tracks. There were so many. That's mule deer, I think, yeah. I don't have a collar for that. We get the mule deer. I want, yeah, yes. Yes, okay. Well, I guess that'd be a good way to wrap this up then with a nice big buffalo. Let's see if I can uh, chase this one down through the wood. I'm going to say that these are pretty old tracks. It's been running through here for a little bit. I'm going to pick up a bit of a jog. Likely a rest zone coming up shortly that we'll bump into it on. Very old, that's all right. We'll keep trucking it. With the direction that it's going, it'll probably turn up over this way near the water. Might even be able to get my bike back. Hey, hey, hey. Still on the very old. But just because it's very old doesn't mean there's no end. You keep chasing, you'll keep finding. Boom, it's an old. And it's an old, that means it's one away from fresh. It's spun around there. It didn't continue that way. It went this way. They might have actually been one of the ones that run back past. Maybe. Yeah, we'll chase him down on the quad bike. Woodrow, mate! How the fuck are you, brother? Sorry, late response on the chat there. It's been pretty, pretty focused right now. Hope you're doing well, my dude. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while, mate. Got a nice, heavy as buffalo here that I'm chasing down. If I can find its tracks a second time. Oh dear. And keep my fucking bike straight, Jesus. Hunt's been pretty good, man. Hunt's been pretty good. It's been more of just a educational thing, I guess, tonight. Just talking about the bows and how to use them, what to do with them. Certain differences and key differences. Now I'm trying to find this nice big buffalo to end the night on. But he seems to have eluded me, which is generally what happens with the bigger ones. When you get so many tracks, it's like it stops rendering certain animals. Can't use a bow to save your life. In real life, uh, I'm making myself. I, I like to make little ones out of any knives, little die cast bows and stuff. Where did this big boy go? All right, hold on, hold on. let me check out where my last track was seen. Can't be seen on the fucking thing there. Over here, coming this way. Back to it. Boom. Yeah, 
goes that way. I can dig it. Stick with these, it should pop up again, but because there's so many, it's kind of like dropping one at a time per animal. Ah, uh, stop, right, oh my god. It's like fucking driving on ice with these things, I swear to god. Well, they kept going this way, so hopefully, hopefully they pop up over this way. Watch the trees. Starting to lose frame rate. That generally means one thing. That I'm catching up to a herd of plenty. Used to hoping my quad bike can handle this slope. Christ. These slopes really take away the advantage the quad bike gives you. Hold on, this isn't right. These footprints are too small. I hate it when they jumble up on the fucking mountainside like this, you can't tell which way is what. I think these are mule deer. We got, we got the poop in here, they've definitely come this way. Let's check the field down here. Oh man, these bikes, I swear to God. They call them an all-terrain vehicle, mate. I would barely say almost. Whoa. You know, this got me hungry for bison. And I'm just getting frustrated with these guys. I know bison, bison are easy. We're going to have a short intermission here, guys, and we'll do a quick hunt on Silver Ridge Peaks. For the sake of me trying to actually, you know, explain and demonstrate things, I'll go with what I can find and can kill confidently. This way I actually get some shit to demonstrate shit on. If I was playing on PC right now, I'd just delete population fucking save files in my folders and then just jump back in with a fresh patch of population. Fucking animals everywhere. Alright, where are we? Boom, 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 boom. You gone? Nah, 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 Silver Ridge. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'll be right back, guys. Bear with me, about two minutes. We'll get out there, we'll put some, uh, put some arrows in the goodness.
All right, back on the place. Now, we're doing what I do best. We're doing what I do best. We're chasing buffalo. Again, it's not buffalo, for Christ's sake. It's bison. This happens every time I change animal. Now, I find the best buffalo. Bison, get with it, knife. The best bison are down here. Ironically, that plains bison outpost. I haven't been on this map in a little bit. At least I haven't been hunting bison on this map in a little bit. So hopefully their cap has kind of respawned a bit. Their population's replenished a little. We get some nice herds. I've been running Yukon lately and I've pretty much hunted them dry now. But previously though, this place was bison barren. There was none. Like if I find a herd, it was three at max and there were few and far between. Oh, excuse me, few and far between. Right, here we go. First things first. We take a look around. Do we have a, have a gaze? I really wish that mountain was inside the border. I really, really do. It's like over here somewhere. But the tallest one on this is the tallest sun sister right here. This old girl. One of the hardest ones to climb, but a lot of fun. You can see it probably just through here. No, you can't actually. Other large mountains are hiding it. Down to business. Okay, so the basic fundamentals of bows while we're driving around. Gauge your distance. Always make sure that you're inside a confident range. Which brings me to the next one. Confidence. Make sure you're certain about your shot. You don't want to be taken in any ifs or maybes. You just, you just scare shit. It's, it's not like they're not guns, okay? You got to understand they're not guns. They don't fly. They don't fly the same. So you want to make sure you're inside confident range. Third, perk up. If you're going to be bow hunting, commit because you're going to need those perks. You only have a certain number for the richer people. You can buy your change ups as much as you want. You can respec whatever. But the most important ones are ammo wobble, and uh, I think it's called iron arm or, or iron guide or something. Just overpower your drawing rate. You want to have that. Basically, it'll make a 60 pound bow a 65 pound bow, so you can pull back that little bit further. So I'm just going to keep scooting around. So yeah, just keep in mind, patience. Confidence, distance, these are all things that you must make in, and the wind. But the wind I don't consider the most important because generally you're not, you're not shooting that far. You, you, you don't want to be making shots like that. But it is important to keep in mind when it comes to no other choice. You will find yourself in situations where a long shot is all you've got. That's a bear coming at me. <clears throat> I don't think I'll get this, but he's coming right for me. That's the wrong arrow type, but fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. Oop, I couldn't jump over it. Oh, well. Yeah, I didn't think you'd last long. Yeah, wrong arrow type, but it was a clean shot. Arrow placement is important. I'll talk about that as we go on. You want to make sure that you avoid the skull. You want to miss the trophy organ. Look, there's another bear up there. Look. Oh, that's a long ass shot. I won't get that. Oh, it was close. See how... I was talking about this earlier, when you're tracking your, your target, see how it's going from right to left and it's literally behind my hilt? I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna hit that bear, I can't line up my shot properly. That's a significant disadvantage, whereas if I was using a sight, I'd get my peripherals. Now I won't catch him on a quad bike, they run really fast. <clears throat> but I did land that first, that first bear, that was, that was a nice shot. They're sightless bows, they are definitely not without their disadvantages, and believe me, they'll give you quite a few. But they make up for it essentially when it comes to damage output, speed of release, how fast you can draw and fire and put another arrow in it. Things like that that really come in handy, which is why they're useful for when you're running gunning. Jumping on the ATVs and, and pushing up on animals. Guns are effective too, but we're bow hunting today. I mean, you use a big gun, you can shoot whatever the fuck you want, I mean. But 
but when using bows you have to keep so much extra in mind to get that extra advantage. There's a lot of bears out here, it might be just the time of day. I, I will keep scooting around, as you can see it's getting a little harder to find the bison on these maps. Because, yeah, I've hunted them a lot. But when we do find them, ho ho ho, it's going to be glorious. It's all a matter of picking up their track. I think, was that bear? I think that was bear. I'm going to go back just in case. It was, it's bear. Oh, you could listen to this for hours. Oh, it's a bit of a rough noise with the quad bite. But, uh, but I'm happy to, to help you with the entertainment. Hopefully you're finding it interesting. Where is this snake? Oh, there's more bears. This place is riddled with bears. Good thing I got health kits on because those, those things will rip you apart. And so this field is looking pretty pretty devoid of bison, which isn't too which isn't too surprising at all. But that's okay. They riddle these lands. They do. At least they used to. I can check the next field over. This is that persistence in demonstration. Never give up. It can be disheartening. It can be. Especially when you're used to playing games like Call of Duty where the job is done, you know, inside the 20 minute window. In this one you've got to commit. Yeah. You gotta you gotta make sure that you have the time, the patience. And you just keep it up and it makes it all that more rewarding. This turkey look. Can fly in there. Much like uh, bison, that turkey are uh, heavy, they can't fly for long, so if you can keep your eye on them, you can chase them till they land, and then you get a couple of minutes, or a couple of seconds, I should say, take the shot. I just lost it. Oh, there it is, good trees. No, I lost it that time. Lost it that time, but that's okay. Like the dove guides Noah to land. The turkey has guided Nath to bison. And we got a nice size herd here. We got a nice size herd. This is really good. Now, much like the buffalo that I was mentioning earlier in park, the herd mentality runs deep. So deep that the, if the front one goes straight off the cliff, the rest of them will too. They will just follow him clean off. There might be one or two smart ones that'll be like, hey, 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 hold on, this isn't right. But yeah, in this case, I can jump off here, turn around, and just start unloading. Oi, there's one right beside me. That was not a good spot to put myself. There's one. There's two. Ah, that bison covered it. Did I really hit that bison? No, I didn't. I did that time though. Thanks champion. Good placement, good placement. You gotta be really careful to miss that skull. That's a trophy organ. So if you clip the skull, you're gonna lose points. You don't wanna be losing points. See how I'm aiming kind of around it? I'm trying to make sure that I dodge it completely and pick up that, that vital organ on the inside. You don't have to adjust by much. You can miss by an inch if you have to. And as you can see, once again, the scapula has stopped nothing. The mighty arrow destroys flesh, muscle, and bone. A fierce competitor to the hunting, hunting community. When you master these things, nothing will stop you. Look at this, they're so angry with me. This would be the one that I tagged earlier, probably getting upset. He don't want to run anymore, look at him. He's ready to fight, mate. He's ready to dish it out. He's not gonna let go. He's like, I'll take it on till I'm on my last breath, mate. Here he comes. Here he comes. I'll dance with him a little bit. It's probably a silly choice to make. Now he's running away from me. So this makes the placement a little bit harder. I'm trying to be really choosy with my spot. Because if you go, because these arrows, they will go right through. They will literally set these bison up for a spit roast. I swear to you. Oh, it was a rear end tap. I didn't want to hit him a third time, but I'm going to have to. Oh, he turned. No, he's dead. Yeah. 
okay, okay, fantastic. That was the one that I clipped in the long range. So you can see I'm taking shots that I shouldn't be. I'm breaking one of my fundamental rules. Keep inside the reach. It's one of the fundamental basics. You wanna make sure you're not shooting wild, which is exactly what I was doing. I get lost in the moment, much like a musician gets lost in the music. And you start looking for those massive kills. But for people that wanna keep their accuracy percentages up, make sure you're confident with your shot. Make sure that you're actually certain that you're gonna hit. All right, let's see what we pick. We hit him way too many times. Oh, we only hit him the once. Oh, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Even though we hit him through the butt end, you can see that it's gone right through the pelvis. It's gone through the spine, the stomach, the intestines, the liver, and it's clipped the lung on the way out, which is good. That's what we want. But it's, uh, you can see the first shot, that was at the longer distance, 64 meters. It's only just tagged him. Let's give him a little scratch. Give him a little scratch. And that was enough to tick him off. <laughs> Mate, if we had a horse, I'd be riding him, but we have to substitute for horsepower, I'm afraid, which isn't too big of a deal. But thanks for joining in. Thanks for joining in. Work, don't play. I like your name. Because we always work when we play. We work hard. But yes, if he, in this case, Robin Hood would actually be on horseback, well and truly chasing these things down on an animal of his own. But can't do that today, so we'll stick, we'll stick with the horsepower. It's kind of the same thing, right? I mean, you sit in the saddle, you tell it to go and it goes, you pull one way and it goes one way, it's just smellier, I guess. It's from M Metaba. I'm not, I'm not familiar. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, honestly. You can't actually shoot at each other. Should tame one of the bison? I probably could, honestly. I know him well enough. Me and the bison have like a... We have an understanding of each other. I will shoot them if they don't run. You know, it's... Pretty basic stuff, really. All right, let's go with the recurve this time. I went the wrong way for it. Killing good time here. All right, fuck the recurve. We'll go with the long way once again. Tag him in the bum just to get him slowed down, and he's run straight into the bushes. I think that's a different one. Oh yeah, Jesus! Gotta be careful with these guys. They're like fucking moving buses, mate. They'll, they'll tag you. Let's, oh, this is a dumb shot. I'm not taking it. Nope, 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 nope. <coughs> but I, I, I should, shouldn't I? I? I should just saddle one up. Chase the bison to chase the bison. Oh, we got a few nice tags in there. I think I hit the same one three times. but As long as it goes down, I don't mind, really. And it should. It's got to be around here somewhere. Should be dead as a door now. There it is. Oppa. Yeah, I knew it was a bum end shot. Oh, that front shot was rubbish. Look at that. Got him right through the neck. Right through the neck. Just bad aim, mate. Just bad aim. When you're hunting like this, it's less about aiming and more about getting those arrows out as fast as you can. There's a second dead one up here that I didn't even know I hit, so I mustn't have hit that. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a bum shot. Still breaks the bone. But when using uh, yeah sightless bows, sightless bows, they they're not giving you any time to worry about aiming. That's the good thing about it. You get up close enough, and you don't have to worry about it too much. As long as you keep your zeroing at 60 meters, that's very important. 60 meters is where all the thing comes in because these arrows don't fly all that, all that sighted. So when you, when you flick them, you want to make sure that you can keep your target above the arrow. So that way you've got a clean line of sight on what you're shooting at. Because otherwise you're going to have like behind your hand and, and on the side of your hilt there, 
you don't want that because you can't you can't get a good judgment of shot. Like you can do things like spotting while you're scoped, but you're not going to have that necessarily early on. So when it comes to to getting those shots off, you want to make sure you can see your target and just get used to how high above the arrow you want to position it. I've been yapping away here and I didn't tag the blood. It was a good shot, so he's not far away. Next uh, next bow we'll use the uh, the coda. This is a good bow. An e quad. <laughs> Eco-friendly. I, I can't be polluting these places. Yeah, that was a good shot. That was that was clean, well placed. Even though it's penetrated nearly the whole way through, I've managed to miss the skull coming up from behind. Generally, when you shoot him up the bum, you want to literally aim for up the bum because the arrow drop will put it straight to the heart. You hate a, you hate e cars, yeah. I don't even think we have any in Australia yet. If we do, I've never seen one. All right, where did your buddies go, my friend? That's not, that's not Bison. I think that might have been the back end of them, honestly. I think I might have got through that herd. How many did we get? Check out my codex here. Hunting of latest harvests. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there was about eight. I think there's probably two left. Which is okay, we won't go looking for them, we'll go digging out for a new herd, I think. Swinging around in the right. Oh shit, that's a nice car. Wolfie! With the follow! Welcome, motherfucker, how you doing? Yo! Welcome to the stream, buddy. Welcome to the stream. We're using bows today. Just giving a bit of a demonstration on where they run, how they run. Getting a good, uh, good perspective of what it's like down the site of the night pace well. Or Captain Deadplank, because I guess you would know me else. Work, don't play, mate. I hope you treat that car like it's your absolute angel, mate. What level? I'm 60, my brother. I've been max level for a little while. <coughs> the bow score that's a little low. It's only at about 75k now, 76k, working towards the 100k mark. What arrow do I use? Mate, that depends on the game I'm chasing. You're 60, you started new. Yeah, it's fun. So a lot of people do that. They've got to make this hit a couple of times and he keeps restarting just because he likes getting those fresh trophies, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I get some people watching from time to time, my man. It's mostly just friends and family, I guess. But I get the odd stranger in here, such as Work Don't Play. I, I haven't seen that name too often. But I'm always happy to have everybody here. 94% hit rate at the moment. So that's what I should do, hey. I feel like I should restart restart my hunter and get rid of the noob stats and refresh the stats with the the more experienced skill set that I have nowadays. Yeah, better than nothing, man, that's for sure. Uh, Nemesis, yeah, it depends on the game, mate. Depends on the game. It really like if I'm chasing bigger game, I'll use the big 700 or the 600 game arrows. Uh, if I use uh, smaller game, I'll use the smaller game arrows. But uh, the bows make the difference because so the, the, uh, of the different poundages. So if you're hunting like medium game with a green arrow, for example, like the, the 500 grains or the, the, the 400 grains, you don't want to be using a big powerful bow. You just want to keep it, keep it chill because you'll obliterate your target, you will. Oh, very nice, very nice. Just kind of putting along here at the moment, heading towards uh, the pit, essentially. Might break off the road here a little bit, though. <coughs> you 
You're going for the pirate legend curse, are you, Wolfie? I'm getting back in to see Thieves, mate. Yeah, gonna be start streaming that again soon. It's been a little while, mostly because the game's been broken as shit, but it's been running pretty good lately, so I'm, I'm fucking stoked and keen to get back into it. Alright, this may be a risky thing to do, but this is what I like to do. Oh dear. That was a lot shorter lived than I expected. I'll just patch that up quick. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Ah, ah! But I'm confident we're gonna run into another herd down here. Lake Prospect is usually well and truly set up for it. Some pronghorn over there. No backflips today, mate. No, no backflips today. We, I had fun the other night, though, dude. That was a lot of fun over there on Kotra Kalinas, jumping off the marble mine. Yeah, yeah, we, we were throwing these quad bikes off the marble mine, on, the, the marble mine on Quattro Kalinas. And it was phenomenal fun. It was fantastic. We had them flipping and rolling and shit. It was great. Hey, that's a heavy bison. We might see how... How far we can chase this one for? It is, mate, yeah. As janky and useless as it can be, for, like, at times, it, al it also has its, like, it, it has its perks, you know. It's got its bits. All right, we're coming up on Lake Prospect now. I expect this big male to turn up somewhere down here. We'll see if we can push him out into a field, get a nice nice tag on him. I got a couple here, awesome. Get yeeted 300, 400 meters away, hells yeah. You do it off the top of uh, Mount Kraken, mate. You get yeeted up to kilometers, bro. I'm not sure what that one is. So I'm gonna make sure this shot counts. Where's my bow? Go with the long bow, just because it's nice close range. You want to aim for the head to hit the stomach. That's what you want to hit. That might put the head right at your spot to shoot. Make up for the distance. That was a clean shot. He'll drop in a minute. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. We'll chase the rest of them, I guess. Hey. Oh dear. The bow is OP. Like in the best ways possible. There's that big male. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Best gun in the game for sure. <laughs> You guys are coming out the other side here. I'm going to hurt myself going through that. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When'd you get that? Is that posted in the trophy the trophy shots on the Snaps Discord? I heard him beside me. Ah. <laughs> Big man. 
Look how tall they are, man. On the quad bike, it is still, like, towering over me. I don't like these shots. Uh, come on. There we go. Hopefully I didn't clip the skull in that second shot. I feel like I did. Crazy taxi. Oh, I used to, actually, yeah. Yeah, there it is. So you want to try and put it right up the bum. You want to go right for the ball sack. Because that way you clip the heart on the way through and it's still lower than the skull. It's The shot placement is important. So that was a great shot. <clears throat> you don't want to really be spending too much time trying to line that up though. You just want to take the most educated guess you can and then let that arrow fly. Now I'm going to keep running down here to the pit. I'm confident... I'm confident they're running straight into the pit. Oh no, they're going up the hill. I'm going to try and dodge that and see if I can get out in front of them. If I can spin them around, that'd be great. Because when they get down into this hole here, they get nowhere to go. You may not even make it that far. Oh, maybe he will. No, it's a rubbish shot. Oh, here comes a mule deer. That's rubbish. Gotcha. Improper ammo, so like, it's a really dumb shot to be taken. Oh! Gotcha. Oh, that would have just hit. Ah, that's all right. I'll go after him later. This bison. This bison is my place of interest. Leo. This is the pit, everybody. This is the pit. This is where animals come to die. They can't get out down the bottom. They can't get out the other side. The only way they have to go is my dinner plate. See him running down there? There's the, the edge of the hunting zone's over there, but that's not, that's not a major problem. He's probably gonna get stuck in here, actually. But they do, and you chase the herds down, they can't get out. They get wedged. Come on, big fella. That's two. Down, boy. Down you go, buddy. Down you go. So he has no choice. He has nowhere else to go but straight back at me. I didn't want to put a third one in him, but I'm going to have to. Where on the map is this? The very southeast corner. Of Silver Ridge Peaks. Every time I scope him up, he's like, I know you're lining me up. Oh, you lucky son of a bitch. Yeah, he's got nowhere to go. He, he'll, he'll get wedged. There's a cliff face. There's water. So he'll either turn around and come back up this way or go back along that way. There's nowhere he can go. Here he is. Ah, you're lucky. Those trees keep saving things. Oh, I'm just walking myself right to the middle of the train track. Just go down. I'm getting overrated now. Let's, there we go. Found the spine. That was sloppy shooting on my behalf. Look at that. You would have been a gold as well. Oh, well. Still, 700 bucks. Just paid for every arrow I've spent tonight. Every time on the 60 meters, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll explain that right now. Hold on, let me get up to this outpost, I think. Always 60 meters, but generally only with the recurve or the longbow, the sightless bows, because of the way you have to aim with them. 
Now, the recurve wasn't so bad. The recurve had a different aiming mechanism to the to the longboat. It was sighted a little bit differently. You had to aim much higher and a little bit to the left. Like you had to put your target a little bit to the upper left of the arrow to make up for the swing. But um, they've changed it up a bit. I'll, I'll show you why. I'll show you why. Uh, no, no, it's, um... All right, here we go. I'll, I'll show you. The, you got no sight. You got nothing to really guide you aside from the direction of the arrow. Now, at 40 meters, which is the standard sighting, you generally aim... I'll go for this, this door here. You want to put, like, the door handle there just above it. You want to put it kind of under the arrow. And when you're shooting for targets, it's like... It's not 40 meters, it's about 28, 30. But it hides your target. So when I zero to 60, I can aim low and actually shoot for my target while it's completely visible. It's all just about memorizing how high above the arrow. You know, I'm shooting for the door handle here. But then when I change it back to 40, I'll take the same shot, but it falls much lower. It can be can be tricky, can be easy, but the different arrowheads. Yeah, I'll show you the. Mm, these ones, no traditional. See how it obstructs. So at the sixty, it will sit it above that point. So when I, when I go back here a bit, I can actually kind of put my target at the point. Oh, that was a bit low. I'm still at 40, 60. There we go. So I'm hitting, I'm going for the door handle. I'll see how accurate my shots are in a minute. Just put my target right where I want it. Bush. And that should be landing at or about. At those longer ranges, it's a bit tricky. And with a recurve bow, you don't want to be shooting that far. But you still want to have that 60. So you can see the majority of the arrows in the inside here. Some of them falling low. But the, the recurve bow isn't built for longer ranges. It, it falls off much earlier. So with the long bow, yeah. But the 60 meters just means that I can put my target, like if I was going for that door, I use the same deal. Just put it above your arrow. It just keeps more of a vision. You got it through the keyhole. Just keeps more vision of your target. It keeps it uh, better, in, better in your sights. So that way you're not hiding it. Because you'll find a lot of the times, like for that bit of paper just there, just there, uh, at like, where are we, about 20 meters? You have to cover it almost completely to actually hit the bit of paper. And you don't want to do that. that that's, that's just annoying as fuck. So at 60 meters, I can put the paper above my arrow and shoot for it that way. That way I have a much clearer sight. Now the, these arrows are useful because of the tip on top. It can be obstructing for me because I use the longbow. But uh, where is it? Change arrow. It's the same concept with every arrow. Just don't go by the arrow head. Go by the curvature of the shaft when it connects to the arrow head. So you just want to go by the curvature of the shaft. That's where you want to judge your height. So once again, at 20 meters, you want to aim pretty much on it. Like without the, the thing on top, you got a better line of sight. So you can make the bit of paper much easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you play without the zeroing, you actually need, you know, to think more about it. Like your straight line is the left-hand side of the bow. So like, left-hand side of the arrow, so it was a bit high. Left-hand side of the arrow. And you put that with 60 meters. I generally put that what I would assume to be about quarter inch, third of an inch. And just play with that. And you just want to sit here, like I'm, I'm even landing high. Like you want to sit here and just practice. You just practice and practice, practice. Hitting tiny little targets and sighting your arrow. Working out where your arrow lands, where you were shooting at. Like, I feel like I've just kind of secretly marked a treasure spot on that map there, that, that picture. But that's why I always zeroed 60, just so I can keep my target visible. So I can see it when I'm shooting at it. So that way I always know that it's there. The recurve bow is a little different. 
back before they changed it to match the long bow, you used to have to aim like here, where that bit of white paper is at the bottom. That used to be your aiming for the, the recurve bow. And I liked that, honestly. That felt more realistic. It, it felt more like the long bows are built for shots like this. The longer draws, the longer arrows, they're built for shots and sighting like that. But the recurve bow is more of just a speed shot. It's more like Legolas shooting from Lord of the Rings. So you would aim more like by the arrow. You wouldn't aim with the arrow. It'd be more about your left knuckle. I kind of wish they changed that back because the recurve bow was, was very useful in different ways because of the different ways that it was sighted and you could actually get a clearer vision of your target. But it was still rubbish long range. Like it's not a long range weapon. Oh, we're gonna change time of day back to morning here. I don't, I don't care much about those problems. I'm going to take a short break and then I'm going to go on another hunt. We're going to do something a little more serious this time. Get the coder out. This thing's a little beast. The coder is what I use for my long range shot. Longest one I've ever hit was uh, 136 meters on a, well, it was a female um, Rocky Mountain Elk. It was a vital hit, busted both lungs. I need lures, just tidying my shit up so I can see what I need. I don't want that. Uh, yes, I want that. I want uh, that for mule deer, that for elk. I don't think we get moose here, or pigs. We do get turkeys though. That could be fun. Well, I'm pretty, pretty good with that. I'm going to tidy up my inventory. Go buy some 174 meters with the bow. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. That's a long ass shot. You've been shooting for a fucking pinprick. Bring that up there. Bring that up there. Elk call it. Go there. Deer bleed call it. Go there. Predator. That'll actually go there. I guess I'll take it at the bottom. Yeah, really. I'm just going to take a short break, guys. I need to get myself a drink. Use the uh, facilities. The old hunter's outhouse. Excuse me. Jesus. Getting a bit burpy there. I drank my coffee too quick. I'm going to just sit this here to recognize that I'm sitting at the toilet. All right. I'll be right back.
All right. <clears throat> now, proper hunting trip this time. Let's uh, let's make some bank. Let's. Uh, all I'll talk about as I go along, and you guys talk to me. Tell us your hunting stories, guys. I want to hear your hunting stories. I always love hearing about the adventures people have, whether they end up in misfortune or absolute glory. It's always interesting to hear other people's experiences. I want to get a little bit closer to this lake up here. Looks like a pretty good plot to start. And it looks like it's bison to begin. I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, we're on the fresh marker here, which means they're definitely spooked a bit. Which way are they going? No, they're not going back that way. They're going this way. Put a bit, bit, put a bit of a jog on. These trees are particularly special compared to most other trees in other reserves because you get full camouflage, like complete camouflage, moving around when you're standing next to them. So you pick up like a walk, go from tree to tree, and you maintain your volume and you don't have to worry about being seen. You got all the movement speed that you need to make the approach. Just make sure you're nice and quiet. Pick your routes. Choose which tree to walk to next as you get to them. And you're invisible, mate. My bow is absolutely skilled out. Yeah, my, my bow bow skills or, or my perks or whatever they are. I will show ya. Boom. My archery, all except that end one because I don't care much for bowing while I'm uh, prone. Yeah, I don't, I don't do that. It's a weird shot. It feels uncomfortable. And I've never needed it, ever. I see the bison down here at the bottom of the hill. At least I can see the discoloration that would signify an animal. And it seems large enough to be a bison. It is, in fact, already nervous, which means that the bike has still kind of got them on edge, but that's all right. I'm going to use the coder for this one because it's a nice clean shot. There's another one on my left. Well, there's a few down here. All right, I'm going to move more to the left here. I'm going to cut them off a bit. It's kind of cliff way down here, so they'll have no choice but to pass me. Level 14? Ah, that's alright, man. You just keep grinding, bro. Just keep grinding. Most importantly, though, don't, don't focus too much on grinding. Take, take the time, you know. Take, take a few extra moments every now and then to just appreciate the world. Appreciate... The kind, of, the kind of freedoms that you get. These bison will be getting real close now. Oh shit. Now I am going to re-zero here when I use the code up. There's a tree. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? <laughs> yeah, I know you're there, buddy. You don't need to scare me. Like that. Oh my god, I really don't like that noise up close. <laughs> Always makes me shit my pants. I expect one to run at me though. There it is. Ah, no, 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 get out of the way. Ah, fuck. Another tree. My god. Yeah, cop it. Have another one, you snaky dog. That's a bear. I'll let him do his thing. Here's another one down here. Let's see if I can make this shot. Wind direction straight in my face. So I'm a little high. Boosh. Probably another bum shot. It was. It was his leg. God damn. So I'll wait for that. Bro, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The amount of times I've, an animal's been saved by the goddamn trees. They're 
not going to get too far. Pronghorn down there and a mule deer by the looks. We've got a lot of animals down here. Hey guys. It's alright, i got my interest on a, on a bison. I did give him a little slick there. I did give him a little slick. Alrighty. I don't feel so bad about that shot anymore. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, dude. Like it's, it's 600 grain arrows. Look, it's 600 grams, man. I can't imagine a bow flicking a half kilo. Over half a kilo. Fucking... All right, oh, this frame rate's gonna dodge me out. I think I might have got him. I honestly don't know. All the animals are just slowing my game down. He's still right here, look. So right, I'll, I'll get him in a sec. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that was a terrible shot. All right, the frame rate is kind of kind of straightening out. Hopefully, those pronghorn piss off. Oh, these slopes are killer. I tell you what. yourself up. If you had to make a noise, I'd have run right past you. Oh, mate. I can hear footsteps. But where? I know they're over this way. Give me another warning call. Not you. Crossbow? Yeah, I, I don't mind the crossbow. I don't mind the crossbow. It's just a little, little too close to a gun for my liking. Oh, I don't know about that. Their, their trajectory speeds are still pretty tight. Like the bows are slower. They have a lot of power there. Yeah, they got heavy arrows, heavy or bolts, I guess you would say. I see you over there. Sixty. The others aren't coming down? No? Okay. Very nice. No, I wouldn't either after you shoot me with an arrow, but... It's a nice little herd that we're tracking down here. I'll just keep at it. You can probably see that I'm much more confident with the longbow when hunting these animals than I am with the coda. Mostly because the coda, I always feel compelled to like rely on the sight to mark my shot. Whereas the bow, this bow, the longbow, I can... Uh, it's less about lining the shot and more about getting it out. Uh, earlier on in the stream, I, I demonstrated the differences. The recurve bow is more close range style. It, it loses accuracy and velocity earlier in the shot. Whereas the long bow, not quite as powerful as far as things like penetration goes. So it won't drive the arrow further in like the recurve bow will. 
but the penetration carries further at the longer ranges. So you'll still get that penetration at the long range with a long bow that you would miss out on with the recurve bow provided you actually land a shot. But uh, at close range, the recurve bow is probably the way to go because it, it delivers much stronger punch. So I, I would use that for things like small game hunting. Or, uh, hold on a second, hold on a second. I think that was a little high. I don't know. But yeah, when you're small game hunting, you want to you want to use a high power weapon because the um, small game arrows are blunt. They're not arrows for stabbing. It's it's more shock trauma, shock trauma, shock trauma. But yeah, you you want to use the big powerful bows like the uh, Hawk Edge seventy pound compound bow. That will uh, that will put a small game small game arrow three hundred grain bury it into a turkey. It'll bury it into a turkey. Whereas if you were using the long bow, it kind of bounces off it a bit. You know, it just kind of hits hits the target. Yeah, recurve bow is a good close range. Long bow is a good long range. The long bows still have good efficiency close range, but not as good as the recurve. Got bears up here. Black bears by the looks. There's my bison right there. This will be an interesting shot. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like to use. Lift your chin, lift your chin. Thank you. So hopefully I did, yeah, cool. So you want to be careful not to clip the skull. So I, I wait till they lift their chin as they run at me. That way I can just, man, I get really disoriented with which way this thing is facing sometimes. But you want to make sure that you land right underneath. Now, I didn't actually hit hit the heart. Just the pure force of the arrow ripping through was enough to cause problems. I still hear something getting, I think it's that bear up there. But yes, the, uh, the coder. This bad boy right here. This motherfucker. This is a precision weapon. This is definitely used for making those big long shots with strong effectiveness, but leaving accuracy to favor. You can line it up, track your bow sight, boom, gives you a second dot. That second dot's where your arrow is gonna land. So that's just how it, how it kind of sits. Absolute perfect. The scope is sometimes buggy, sometimes it like won't work and you have to like change to another weapon or, or another item. Side up with that. Let's break my arrow. But uh, it, it does get a bit buggy. But when I'm doing things like hunting bison or, or the fast paced stuff, I use this. This way I've got less time worrying about lining up that scope and more time focusing on my shot placement. Now, I'm not quite sure where they've gone. It is in a way. It is, yeah. It, it's more of a skill flex than practicality. Like, obviously, if you're going to be out competition hunting, I wouldn't be using a long bow unless there was genuine benefits to giving myself the handicap. But if not, then I will, I will use the coder through and through. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Bows are 100% harder than guns. Particularly because of the range. Because, because you've got to get up much closer. You leave more room for the animal to startle. See, I don't, I don't hunt like most people. Either. Most people have like fast travel stations that they bounce around and they go and hit up feed zones and all that stuff. And they end up with six or seven... Uh, you know, decent sized ones. Me, I like to roam. I like to explore. I like to just kind of walk it. See what I see along the way. I got one of those bloody sound bugs again with the audio stuck. 
Just gotta find that same tree. There it is. Now they're gonna be just over this crest here. I didn't actually check poo, so I could have probably crossed over. But I'm confident they're just over this crest here. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Much more relaxing. I don't feel so strapped for time. I, I've, I haven't got set destinations that I need to get to. I just wander around and the stuff that you find, the, some of the sights that you see just roaming. It's, uh, it's really quite something. I didn't check that poo. I did, but I didn't, I didn't read it. This one was very fresh, okay. So that'll be just down the hill. And quitted trout with the follow. Thanks, matey. I, I didn't have my thing open, so I didn't quite catch that. But if you're still around, mate, I appreciate it. Welcome aboard. I stream more than the hunter. I, I stream this most regularly at the moment, but all sorts of games, all sorts of games. I don't chase like the popular opinion. I just play what games interest me. I'm not, I'm not like chasing fame or anything. So minimalist at its finest. But welcome, welcome to the team, welcome to the squad. Happy to have you. Those pronghorns have been making themselves known for a while. Wait, 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 before I do that. I think I see a patch of brown down there that looks a little out of place. Do you see it? Right, what are we looking at here? Yeah, that was definitely a bison. Because that was a bit of a trickier shot. I wasn't going to rely on the uh, the longbow for that one. So as you can see, the uh, the coda with the bright side. You can actually, you don't need the coda either. You can stick the bright side on anything you like. But I recommend the coda because of the balance of accuracy and power meets velocity over distance sort of thing so that's the only reason why i would recommend putting it here because this bow has the precision to use it whereas other bows tend to get a little bit sloppier i mean mo most archers so when when you see other other archers the the thing that's on the front here is the one you want it it's hard to see that the, the arrow nest it's got like three prongs that allow it just kind of sits the arrow in there and when you let it go the, the feathers can pass right through it. The other bows have this thing that's called a whisker biscuit. I, I don't know if that's like the actual name, it's just a common hunter term for it. And it's like this weird circle of like little prongs, like hairs, and it sits in there and they grab the arrow feathers as it pu pu pushes through. So yeah. Hunting almost any animal. Mate, I would recommend the seven millimeter. It's a single shot muzzle brake, but it will take down anything with ease. And again, best for black bear hunting, I would definitely recommend the seven millimeter Magnum, 100%. Uh, that that uh, rifle is the one that I use. It's got a long range value, short range value. The only thing that falls off about it is the single shot muzzle brake. You can only fire one bullet, then you'll crack it open, chuck another one in there, close it up. But it, it's a great weapon to use, great weapon to use. There are probably other rifles, but I'll add, my rifle score isn't that high, so I haven't unlocked heaps. But the seven millimeter, that's great. That'll hit kill everything from like pigs, class four, all the way up to nine. Yeah, yeah, the, the 300 DLC gun. So if you're prepared to spend some DLC, I, I would recommend the 300. But that uh, that's probably probably much bigger. I don't know, I, I feel like the 7mm could, could handle smaller game at the same time.
Yeah, the trade set. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I'm not all that familiar with gun names. It's more the rounds they use. So like the, that lever action 4570. I, I can't remember the name of it. I can never remember. The Coachmate. Ha, <laughs> I did remember the name of it. It's called Coachmate. Lever action. That gun too. That's another gun that I would recommend. It's very similar to the 7mm. Not quite as powerful as far as range goes. But the uh, the three clip, three shot clip, with powerful rounds in it, you'll you'll be putting down anything four to nine. Yeah, it'll kill pigs pretty much instantly. Uh, deer, elk. Yeah, obviously the bigger game you get, the more precise you're going to need to be. And use the gun in the bushes. You can use a bow in bushes too. I think you may be using a term that I'm not familiar with. No. I was confident the bison come down this way. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. That's a great weapon, great weapon. Highly recommend. Alright, follow this. Myself, though, uh, I'm a bowmaster. I, I, I say that self-proclaimed, but I, by that I mean I use only bows. I use only bows so much that, uh, hold on, uh, let me, uh, here here's my profile card. I got 20, 20k in the rifle score, just because I needed a lot of them for missions. Handgun and shotgun, ignored completely, and I'm nearly, I'm actually getting pretty close to the 100k mark for archery. I'm at 76,000. 80% the bow, yeah. It really depends on what I'm doing. Like when I'm hunting, like I'm doing now, just walking around, enjoying the game, I'll use use bows, just so I'm more comfortable. I like them. They're quiet. That's another thing that advantage the bows give you. Certain things where like an animal would spook using a gun, the bow will actually, will not. In, in many cases, the bow will spook depending on how close they are. But if they're far enough apart, you can put one down, wait a sec, put the next one down without him spooking. It's really handy. Whereas a gun would have scared everything all around you. Yeah, that's the, yeah, pistol. Rhino 454, yeah. That's a big pistol. That'll put a bear down in a hurry. Probably shoot lions with that thing too, I reckon. I'm not sure where these bison went. I keep feeling like they're just going to walk down to the water, but then I keep losing. I'll retag a track. There's pronghorn down here too, so it's like tripping me out. Yeah, I know what you mean by that. Fella from the Discord uses that all the time. I think purely for the sound of it. Did they go this way? They didn't walk in front of me. I thought that was a log. That's bison. It's a nice mount. We got a nice mount in here. We have the benefit of being choosy. Three females. Female. I think I might have picked off all the boys by now. Very possibly. I don't like this open field. I must see if I can take a shot. Yet. <coughs> Wind pulling left. I'll go for this one. Now they are close by, so they're going to spook, they know what happened, but they don't know why, they're, they're not all sure. So let them run a little bit, they won't get all that far. They had to have gone down, surely. It was a good tag.
Alright, we've got a couple of good hits in there. There's another dead one down there. I knew I tagged it well. Ah, clean. Perfect shot. I would have just severed every artery to the heart. My favorite fur type. This may be a little bit bison bias, but it would have to be the leucistic, leucistic, the Swiss, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I've got two of those bison. It's kind of like an albino, but it's not, it's just white. Yeah, keep on barking, mate, I'm coming for you. This one was good, that uh, wind changed. It did change my arrow's trajectory by about an inch and a half at 100 meters, maybe two inches. I oversold it a little bit, but thankfully I left my, myself enough room, just in case. But uh, yeah, I also have a, uh, a piebald gold red deer. It's not a red deer, it's an elk. It's a uh, Rocky Mountain elk. And that one's pretty nice. Oh, where's your buddy? I know you are up there. I don't quite see him through the trees yet, so I don't think they've gotten that high up the slope. That was another good shot. And now, remember, I shot way out in front of his head, and it still took, like, what, a metre before he reached it? That was at about a 30 metre, I think it said. A bit over. So you've got to remember to, to really track your targets, especially when they're moving quick, even at closer ranges, because they're not guns. Like, I guess in a Sea of Thieves sense, think about a cannonball. Think about how much you have to shoot in front of another ship that's moving before the cannonball reaches it. You've got to really give, them, give your cannonball the time to get to the target and give your target to get time to get to them. Sorry, I'm kind of double focusing here. So I'm fumbling up my words. They've gone just up the kind of slope there. What do we got up here? So they're just kind of going back. <laughs> Look at the hunting pressure. You can see dead bison, 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 dead bison. About to be another dead bison. Maybe a dead bear if it comes across my way. What's going to make this problematic though is they're kind of walking back over old tracks. So I might get spun around up here. Nemesis, mate, you enjoy the rest of your night. I hope you sleep well, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your presence. Much love, my dude. We'll have a game tomorrow if you like. We'll get out there on some wreck fest or something. Smash some cars up. Not too much farther now. There we go. That's the bear. See if the predator collar will work. That's not the predator collar. Maybe not. It's probably the bear turning around going, fuck you, mate. I know what you're trying to do. Maybe not. 
You make sure you do, brother. I can barely see it. I feel like there's a third one out there. I think I'm okay. This should have been a pretty clean heart shot. I felt good about it. Oh, I was close. <laughs> I was so close. I did get that second bear. Fantastic. I honestly thought it was a bit in the stomach, but I must have clipped the lungs there. Yeah, cool. He must have dropped down into it by the looks. And there's our friends from earlier. it's bison I kind of now traditionally hunt these guys with long bows you seem like it might be a pretty heavy boy so I'm gonna play this one out kind of smart which is not off to a good start because he's probably in my wind my second game. keep on creeping on keep on creeping on through that apparently. Oh, I need another warning call. Usually you can just kind of stomp around. He might be long gone. Looks promising. Yeah, here we go. He's a big boy, too. What fur type? Anything special? Common. So, no, nothing special. So he's kind of in my scent cone at the moment. So what I'm going to do is pressure him. And I want to pressure him aggressively. You're a strange dog worker. So what this is doing is forcing him to flee just like that and what we're trying to have is get him out of our scent radius hopefully he takes a sharp left or right up here and that will make our approach much more ideal 
And on the bonus to that, he will also be a little bit gassed out. So it looks like he has made a sharp turn. No. Not quite there yet, so we'll keep it up. And another advantage is we may actually have a position for a shot, which we don't just yet. See how now he's kind of turning out of it. We're going to have a much better advantage. I'm going to pressure him for another 10 or so seconds. Bring it down to a walk. to slow down. Gonna hit him off using the trees. Always use the trees. This one is a useless tree. Keep out of sight. I don't think he kept going uphill. I think he's moved downhill a little bit. Here we go. Alright, now we play it smooth because we don't have the wind. We don't have to go running in there now. <coughs> when you get good patches of trees, you can pick up to a crawl, uh, a uh, crouch, open open spaces, just drop down. <coughs> this is how you keep the speed up when you're tracking through. There is a perk that you might need for this to reduce your sound and I think visibility when in dense, dense bush. There he is over there. He's about 60 meters out, 50 meters out. space here, I don't like that. But now he's moving well and truly out of our scent and that's what we want. We forced him to move away from the advantage and pushed him into a disadvantage. Well, on, on his case. Especially when you're hunting the big fellas, you want to keep things like this in mind being able to reset your shot and drive the animal where you want it and plan that attack ahead of, ahead of time. Oh, where's he gone? But that will allow you to get back, reset your shot. Why do I feel like he's walked right over the top of me? Because I'm talking and not watching. He's actually a pretty big boy, yeah, hell yeah. Right, well, we got a significant advantage. He's gassed out, he's tired. So hopefully he's well and truly asleep. Now, he's not even facing us right now. So as long as we're quiet, we should be able to just walk straight on up. Right there, look at that. All right, that's an easy shot. That's an easy shot. Now, if I was to place his heart anywhere, I would say about... Oh, that was lucky. I nearly fired without checking my zero. Yeah, come at me, bro. This placement's going to be tricky. Hopefully that clipped the side that I wanted. All right, let's check it out. Hopefully we missed that missed the skull in that second shot there. 
Uh, first shot was good, a little bit high, so I wasn't, I wasn't low enough. Definite gold, so I did miss the skull. Yes, I did, and I put it right beside his eye. So that's where I'm trying to aim. I'm trying to aim just outside of his head zone. Almost got the heart in that second shot. I was pretty close. A little bit high again. But that was a damn fine hunt down. Damn fine hunt down. Nice golden bison right there. And would you believe it? There's more getting around. What have we got here? Female. Probably an old track. I think we come through here a while ago. We did. Wait, what's that? Once again, a patch of brown that does not line up. It's the water. Okay. I think it's just the water tripping me out. It is. Fucking well done. Well, this stream has hit now two and a half hours. And if I had any hope of making a YouTube video out of it, that is long past. But I hope those that tuned in enjoyed themselves. I mean, I'm no fucking top-notch streamer. I don't have like fancy overlays or anything. I barely even use my camera. But uh, I like to have a chat. I like to hang out with you guys. It's good fun. I like having you here. Enjoy, enjoy a, a story sharing. Exchange expertise. It, it, it should be good. You know what I mean? Come on back anytime you want. I'll be streaming regularly. All sorts of games. It'll, uh, it'll be fun, I reckon. It's really up to you guys. No pressure. I guess, as always, much love, everybody. Peace to the world. And enjoy the rest of your day, evening, night, morning, afternoon, lunchtime, dinner time. Whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a fantastic one. Much love again. Peace out, my people. <laughs>